Hello everyone, back to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. Well, today's second video is going to take us uh, into the first week of February. So, all the indications are that we're going to have quite a cold and unsettled week next week. The position and placement of these areas of low pressure uh, next week is going to be very critical as to where the rain-snow divide is. And the models are chopping changing on the position of these areas of low pressure in the course of next week. So it's going to make for a very complicated uh, weekend forecast again tomorrow. Uh, you remember last week, uh, weekend forecast became very complicated. And uh, I think it will be another one of those this week with very low confidence. Um, there will be rain and snow around, though, through the course of next week in generally a cold and unsettled um, weather pattern. That uh, is setting up through the course of uh, next week. So I'll tweet for everything that's going on very shortly. We'll have a look at the uh, ECMWF um, temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies for uh, the next month as well. At the end of the video, see what they're showing. So um, I'll tweet you through it all very shortly. Just say that uh, January Friday was released earlier on this afternoon. So that's your month ahead look ahead with the Japanese and CFS B2 models. And uh, that's taking us into the second half of February now. Of course, counting down the clock to the end of this very strange winter of 2018-19. Tonight, we're going to have the uh, first ENSO update of uh, 2019. So that's going to be with you around 7 o'clock or so this evening. Going to start off with the Arctic Oscillation Observed and Forecast chart, though. So the black line shows where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation. The red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. Just an index that's reflecting the state of the atmosphere in the North Pole over the Arctic. It's not driving anything. It just tells you what the atmosphere is doing. So at the moment, the Arctic Oscillation is uh, negative. We've got a negative AO, so there's some going to be some sort of high pressure and uh, blocking over the North Pole at the moment. Uh, and it's forecast to go even more negative, actually. It does tick up a little bit over the next few days, but then through next week into the start of February, a really negative AO is setting up there. You have to say that's a little bit of a crash uh, beginning to appear with the AO as we move into the beginning of February. Beyond that, there's a real split within uh, the uh, GFS ensembles. They're all keeping it on the negative side. It's just a, a question of how negative they are. So the the strongest in terms of um, a positive AO is that one, which is basically at around neutral. Otherwise, all the other GFS ensemble members are either just standardly negative or absolutely through the floor negative uh, down there. So it does look as though we'll be keeping appreciable levels of high pressure and blocking up over the pole uh, over the uh, next couple of weeks. Remember, the reason the index is negative is the weather is driving it negative. As well as the weather that drives the index, not the other way around. The reason those GFS ensemble members are going negative like that is because there's going to be high pressure blocking up over the uh, North Pole. Now, the NAO is um, at odds with this, and it has been uh, for the past uh, few weeks, and it continues to be. So, the NAO, uh, again, it's the same idea. The black line tells us where we've been with the NAO. The red lines at the end where GFS ensembles are forecasting the NAO to go. Uh, again, just an index that's reflecting the state of the atmosphere this time looking in the North Atlantic as opposed to the Arctic. So, right now, the NAO is just here. It's around neutral. But really, from now onwards, it looks like it's going into positive territory uh, and staying there through this opening part of February. So this, again, it remains very complicated what's going on here. We have the two indexes out of sync with one another. They have been for some time. The AO is negative, increasingly so. So an increasing signal for northern blocking. But the Atlantic is saying no. The Atlantic wants to continue with westerlies and have low pressure around Iceland, high pressure strengthen from the Azores into uh, southern Europe. And so we have a real dilemma here between the two indexes as to uh, which will gain ascendancy in the next couple of weeks. Will it be the northern blocking via the negative, the negative AO 
or will it be the Westerlies that prove to be the dominating factor, or will it actually be a blend of the two? And if you get a blend of the two, if you get a strength of Westerly flow, but with a northern blocking signal, then what you're probably going to come away with is cold zonality. Uh, and that's what we've got coming up next week. And we might have more of this as we go on into February, but not getting into a true northern blocking pattern until we see the pattern within the Atlantic, in the North Atlantic, starting to shift as well. Every day we keep coming here and we keep waiting to see these red lines starting to drop down, starting to go negative. So far there's no sign of it. We shall keep looking as soon as the Atlantic is starting to move into a more blocked and a negative NEO type setup, I think we will see appreciable levels of northern blocking and probably locked in cold weather. But until the Atlantic is willing to go in that direction, uh, we're probably going to kind of like have a, a mishmash of cold but also unsettled west or northwesterly flows. And that's what we've got coming up next week, of course. Uh, these are the uh, GFS temp uh, air temperature and precipitation ensembles. We're looking at South Ockendon uh, in Thurrock in Essex today. Someone's asked to have a look at South Ockendon, another place on our list. So the red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average for South Ockendon. And we're mild of an average at the moment. We're going to be mild for the rest of today and for England and Wales most of tomorrow too. But after that, the temperature's on the slide through the end of the weekend and into next week, we have colder than average uh, temperatures there with the upper air temperatures and staying pretty cold then throughout most of uh, next week. We might just be shaving up for a little bit of a, a lift up in the temperature around Wednesday or Thursday, but that's associated with an area of low pressure that's coming in from off the Atlantic. And there's a lot of uncertainty about the track of that area of low pressure and there'll be rain or snow uh, with that area of low pressure. Overall, colder than average, and it remains the situation that we've been talking about for a long time now. So uh, most of these um, ensemble members are between minus 5 and minus 10 and 850 HPA, which is colder than average, not in the freezer, cold. Going to the freezer, again, we have to go between minus 10 uh, or lower from minus 15 or possibly even down to minus 20 at 850 HPA. That's freezer level cold. And uh, there's no sort of ensemble members going to that level. The only one is this one just here right at the very end. That one does dip underneath minus 10 at 850 HPA. So we're talking about cold, but also unsettled. And uh, that's the other story of the uh, weather, I think, through as we close out January and move into February. Got lots of precipitation spikes there. And obviously, with the temperatures remaining cold, there's wintry potential. But it will depend on how these areas of low pressure move in from off the Atlantic, where the warmer sectors are, where the colder sectors are, or maybe even where those warmer and colder sect sectors occlude. Um, and form triple point lows. All of that kind of thing will be important, I think, as we close out January and move into February uh, to determine where the divide between rain and snow will be. Definitely expect to see snow watch in the days ahead, but at the moment we can't really say with good confidence where it's likely to see rain, where it's likely to see to see snow other than the further north you go obviously the greater the chance of snow will be but that doesn't rule out the chance of snow in uh, places further south as well temperature anomalies from the 25th of january to the 2nd of february a little bit below average so another slightly cold and average week coming up looks very cold up over scandinavia in uh, the week ahead precipitation anomalies Average to a little bit wetter than average, so it's only going to a more unsettled period of weather. The big sort of un, untold story about this winter, we've all been focusing on the mild weather and the sudden stratospheric warming. Will it go cold? Will we get locked in high latitude blocking? That's what we've really been focusing on. The one thing we've, there hasn't been a lot of talk about this winter uh, is how dry it's been. It's been a very dry winter, and usually so after a very dry summer and autumn. Obviously, that will have implications for the coming summer if it's still very dry uh, and hot at that point. But this does look like a slightly more unsettled week that we've got coming up here anyway from the 25th of January to the 2nd of February. Looks like it's either going to be average or above average with precipitation and some snow uh, potential in with that as well. 
Right, so this is how the GFS is looking for Monday. So we're going to re-establish cold northerly winds over this weekend. But tomorrow's going to start off the weekend on quite a mild note. But on Sunday, we're going to pull down a cold northerly wind. That could bring snow to parts of northern east of Scotland, northeastern England. Uh, we're still looking pretty cold on Monday with the operational GFS run. The winds remain in from the north. We've got low pressure out to the northwest. That looks like it's heading in our direction. So this low pressure pushes through the country into that cold air on Tuesday. So the first sort of wintry potential is probably on Tuesday when there's rain, sleet or snow uh, pushing across the country again. We need to wait a couple of days before we can start to firm up on where the rain and snow divide is going to be. But Tuesday could be quite a wintry day, particularly for northern parts of the country. That low pressure is out of the way. It turns winds back into the north for Wednesday. So Wednesday is also a cold day. There'll probably be a hard frost early and late. But snow showers will probably be mostly restricted uh, to coastal fringes. This area of low pressure then is causing all of the question marks and uncertainty for the end of the week. What track will this low pressure take? So if it does something like that, then it's going to bring a risk of snow to many parts of the country. If it moves in like that, however, it will restrict the snow probably to northern England and particularly to Scotland. This particular GFS run, the 6 o'clock run, moves in from Ireland into northern parts of England. So the risk of snow will be on the northern and eastern side of this low pressure. That's where the risk of snow uh, would be. On the southern and western side, which is going to be kind of like uh, around here, that's where you're going to have the risk of rain. But again, this low pressure will be moved northwards and southwards, I think, over the uh, next couple of days. I would suspect summer is going to get very significant snow through the second half of next week from that area of low pressure. But where it is, um, hopefully we'll know a bit more in the weekend forecast tomorrow, but it may not be actually until early next week. So tomorrow's weekend forecast will probably be quite vague on that uh, snow risk area. By Friday, the low pressure is moving into the North Sea, pulling back these cold northerly winds across all parts of the country. That looks like it sets us up for quite a cold weekend next weekend. This is Saturday, the 2nd of February. And then bring another low pressure into that cold air on Sunday the 3rd. Again, there's rain, snow risks uh, in with this. Uh, so uh, far too far away to have any confidence where any rain or snow will be just going to be a case of watch this space um we're up to day 10 so this is uh, monday the 4th of february low pressure is up to north of scotland down out to west of the uk building up a little bit of a ridge uh from the atlantic that looks quite transient um this area of low pressure just here is quite interesting so uh, the low pressure just there on the 4th of february but by the time you get through to many of the fifth, that low pressure is off the south coast of England. So uh, that's a bit of a channel low that's moving across the south. Again, there could be rain or snow risks in with that. It will depend on the exact track, track of the low pressure, exact parameters within the atmosphere. Very complicated forecasting coming up, I think, over the next week to 10 days. That low's out of the way. More low pressures waiting in the wings in the Atlantic. Uh, this one begins to dive southwards in the extended range up to Thursday the 7th now, so very low confidence. But this one is beginning to move away to our south as we start to build up heights to the north. So we're finally starting to see a little bit of northern blocking here as we get through to the second week of February. As far as we can go, it's going to be 10th of February. We're putting in a cold easterly wind. So eventually we do get to some northern blocking and a Scandinavian high, but it takes a long time uh, to do it. Cold and unsettled before that. This is a parallel GFS run. So again, we've got cold northerly winds on Monday, and then we bring this low pressure in from the northwest on Tuesday. Rain and snow risks with that on Tuesday, leaving us pretty cold, but with a drier day on uh Wednesday. Then on Thursday, this area of low pressure is on a more southerly track, you'll notice. So there's a greater snow risk with this one through many parts of the country. This is restricting the mild sector with that low pressure, uh, kind of like to there. So basically anywhere north of Wales and the Midlands is at risk of significant snow with that area of low pressure on uh, Thursday. By the time you get through to Friday, that low pressure is across the north of France. So even southern and southeastern parts of the country probably at risk of snow, significant snow at the end of next week with those bitterly cold northeast winds. Definitely a lot further south of that area of low pressure on the parallel GFS run compared to the operational. Again, the position of that low pressure placement of it will be varying a lot from model run to model run. 
The first weekend of February looks cold. Winds are in from the north on Saturday the 2nd of February. And then the next low pressure moving in from off the Atlantic on Sunday the 3rd. Again, there's rain, snow potential uh, with that to, um, that low pressure sort of across the central part of the country by uh, Monday the 4th of February. And then it begins to move away, similar to what the operational run is shown, and we start to build up uh, high pressure to our north in more extended range. This is Tuesday the 5th, and then on to Wednesday the 6th, we start to see genuine northern blocking beginning to appear. It's in the extended range, so it's unreliable. But this is turning winds into the east and into the northeast too. And uh, we keep things pretty cold, but with a drying trend as we go to the end of the parallel GFS run. That's as far as we can go to Sunday the 10th of uh, February, looking cold and quite blocked as well. GM looks like that. Cold northerly winds for uh, Monday. Then chance of some rain or snow on Tuesday. Wednesday is probably a dry but cold day. And then there's low pressure moving in off Atlantic. This time a little bit further north. A little bit further north, that area of low pressure on Thursday, meaning that snow is probably restricted mainly to Scotland and Northern England. Uh, that low pressure just sits over the top of the country, really, in the extended range. We can't get rid of it till the very end, day 10, Monday the 4th of February. We start to see that low pressure slipping to the south and heights beginning to rise to the northwest. That's going to go a little bit uh, colder and more blocked. The ECM has again those northerly winds on Monday, so a cold start to the coming week. Then low pressure trickling in from the Atlantic on Tuesday, bringing a risk of rain or snow. Um, that has snow potential for the south, actually. So uh, there we are on Tuesday, be night on Tuesday, with an area of low pressure to the southwest of Ireland. Uh, as we go through to midnight on Wednesday, that low pressure is somewhere in the channel, so that's probably bringing a snow event to southern parts of the country early next week. Uh, let me go through to Thursday, and this bigger area of low pressure pushes in from off the Atlantic. Uh, so this low pressure kind of like gets stuck out to the west of us, so this restricts any snow at the end of next week, primarily to Scottish hills, and there'll be a lot of wet and windy weather with that, but it might be a little bit of a mild outlier, uh, that one. And then we go through to next weekend, low pressure is sticking close to the country until day 10, uh, when it actually starts to pull up quite a southwesterly wind. Man, I think that's got to be a bit of a mild outlier, what the ECM operational run is uh, doing there. That's quite a strange run, and no other model is showing those west southwesterly winds on Monday the 4th of February. I think the basic story remains one of being pretty cold and uh, pretty cold and wintry next week, but how cold, how wintry, where any snow is, is still to be determined. These are how the ECM to their postage stamps are looking in terms of the ECM ensembles. So we've got 23 ensemble members at day 10, which is the 4th of February, looking like this. They've got low pressure over to the south of the country. They're bringing in a westerly flow. They do have a blocking seal. They do have some above average heights to the north, to the northeast. But generally, they're bringing the air in from off the Atlantic. Uh, then we've got another 19 that have a, a stronger blocking seal. They have more in a way of high pressure around ice extending back towards Scandinavia with low pressure to the south. So these are a colder option. They're bringing in more of an east-northeasterly flow. And then we've got another nine that are just very unsettled with below average heights centred over top of the country. Again, these do have a blocking seal. So all, all ECM on, on, on some members are indicating some sort of area of high pressure or above average heights to be uh, to our north, but just varying on the placement and the strength of those above average heights. Uh, those 19 there in the middle box, the green box, are uh, by far the coldest of the ensemble members, though. And then at two weeks, which is at 360 hours on the 9th of February, this is how things are looking. So we have above average heights extending from the Atlantic into uh, Greenland and then back to Scandinavia. Uh, 17 ensemble members are doing that with below average heights to our south. They're cold or very cold, bringing in the wind from an easy direction. Then we've got another 12 with a mid-Atlantic ridge extending up towards Greenland. They have the uh, below average height centred over top of the country. So they're unsettled and probably not that cold. They're bringing in more of an Atlantic flow. 
Uh, there's another 12 that have high pressure really dominant over towards Greenland. So again, these are proper northern blocking with these ensemble members. Uh, low pressure is to the south of the country. And again, we're pulling in these cold east or northeasterly winds with those. And then we've got a minority option of 10, which have below average heights out to the northwest. And these ones are bringing in a relatively mild west or southwesterly uh, flow. Um, so proper split, actually. We've got 17 uh, there and 12 there that are, uh, that are cold, going for genuine northern blocking, albeit slightly different in the placement of that northern blocking. So that's kind of like 20, 17 and 12. So that's going to be 29 members out of 51 that are uh, showing genuinely cold and northern blocking type signals in two weeks. And then we've got 12 and 10. So 22 uh, that are uh, sort of uh, a milder and more unsettled option. So uh, there's not a lot in it between the ECM ensembles in two weeks' time as to which way uh, this goes. Just again, highlighting the uncertainty that we've seen all winter, uh, really. The ECMWF uh, extended model, though, is still very keen on cold conditions in the coming weeks. So uh, this is from the Hungarian Met Office. We use this, of course, for our weekly ECM uh, 30 day uh, temperature and uh, precipitation forecast for the UK and for Europe every Tuesday. It updates on a Friday as well, though, and this is what it's showing in the week here, the 28th of January to the 3rd of February. Much colder average Scandinavia, much colder than average for the UK and Ireland temperature. Anomalies for us are between 3 and 6 degrees below average, and generally cold. In the west and northwest of Europe, much milder, actually quite warm, you would say, certainly warmer than average across many eastern and southeastern parts of Europe. The precipitation anomaly in the weekend looks very unsettled down across southern Europe, but it looks much drier to the north. So obviously you can see where all the high pressure is sitting and is going for a considerable uh, northern blocking signal in uh, the week ahead. Then we go through to the next week. It's week six. So it takes us from the 24th, uh, from the 4th of February, I should say, through to the 10th. Still looking cold in the north and west of Europe. Looks much milder down in the south and the southeast of Europe. Precipitation-wise, again, southern Europe looks quite wet. Northern Europe looks dry under those blocking areas of high pressure. The next week goes further into February. It's the 11th to the 17th of February. Northern Europe still looking cold or very cold across many northern parts of Europe. Southern Europe looking closer to average precipitation anomalies. Still looking quite wet down through the Med. Still looking quite dry across northern Europe from that northern blocking. And then the final week, week eight for uh, 2019, week four of the forecast period, still shows a weak signal for cold and average conditions to be close to the UK. And Ireland, Scandinavia still looking cold. Southeast Europe still looking quite mild. So the broad setup continues even into the second half of February. Maybe a little bit more unsettled and slight reduced northern block signal uh, by that point. But again, it looks like the ECM is really set on cold conditions to dominate through much of February. The ECM extended model, I mean the long range model, and that goes along with what we're seeing from all of the other long range output too. So don't jam a Friday. And the signal there from both the Japanese and CFS models, American model, both of those models are indicating considerable levels of blocking and cold conditions during February. The ECMWF extended long range model is on board with that as well. And we know the Beijing Climate Centre is, is too, because we looked at that earlier in the week. So, as has been the case throughout this uh, winter, or certainly since we have the sun and stratospheric warming anyway, all of the long range stuff is uh, pointing towards considerable northern blocking and cold weather, but we're still struggling to get the Atlantic to move into uh, a phase that would be conducive to get proper locked in high latitude blocking and send us into like a two or three week freeze up. Because that's the kind of thing these long range models are hinting at with so much northern blocking around. They are hinting at the possibility of freezing cold conditions uh, for February. 
But until we see the Atlantic shifting its pattern, we'll know when it is because the NAO will start trending into its negative phase. Until that happens, we may just be stuck with these cold and unsettled, but not very cold uh, conditions that we've got coming up in the week ahead. So it remains a very, very complicated winter, uh, this. And we've just got to sit back and continue to monitor and see whether we eventually do uh, get there. So that's uh, today's second video update done and dusted. We'll be back tonight with the ENSO update, uh, the first one of those of the year. Tomorrow we've got weekend forecast. We'll have a look at the weather next week to 10 days as well. Sunday, you're going to have the Gazovis Sunny Roundup. You'll have the first seasonal model roundup for spring. Haven't done anything for spring so far this season because of the uh, shutdown in America, but I will bring you a seasonal model roundup for the spring on Sunday. And there'll probably be an ensemble's watch on Sunday evening as well, because I know a lot of you like to see those. Right, so that's all for now, and thanks for watching.